Well, hello again. How has it been another week? Honestly, it's whizzing by. Soon be Christmas. So this week, I thought I would speak about what I'm calling tomorrow's people. So do you remember that program? Gosh, I think it stopped airing in like the 90s or the noughties or something like that called Tomorrow's World. And the aim of the program was to introduce us to the future world of technology, all with the idea of kind of helping us get our heads around of how uh, the lives of people would be affected by this, you know, future inventions and future technologies and, and what we want to do about it. And I'm kind of bringing that to life today with this notion of tomorrow's people. So I want to do the same thing. I want to introduce uh, tomorrow's people and kind of what does that mean for us as people managers, people leaders uh, in terms of our daily work. Now, this is linked to the blog that I've done uh, this month, but I won't lie. It's quite a long one, uh, more of a, you know, half an hour read rather than a quick five minute read. So I thought I'd embrace, uh, you know, inclusion in all of its forms and I'd record it a bit like this as well for those that, uh, you know, aren't so interested in reading and they prefer to listen or watch. So the first thing I'd say that is um, as a result of my work I'm doing with uh, Portsmouth University on the Help to Grow Management Scheme, uh, we know that there is a direct link between employee engagement and the productivity or profitability of an organization. And it can be as much as 20 to 40% kind of impact, if you like, on the bottom line, whether that's a decrease in staff turnover, an increase in staff productivity, an increase in customer service, increase in sales, all that kind of stuff, direct line of sight between employee engagement and uh, business success. And the funny thing is, is that uh, the more an individual feels, you know, accepted by the workplace, able to be themselves in the workplace, the more likely they are to be engaged and therefore productive and uh, potentially uh, enabling your profitability. But uh, one of the things we do know is that the nature of changes that are coming both to the workforce and the workplace in the future, um, if we're not careful, we might end up sleepwalking into one of those employee engagement kind of crashes, if you like. Now, today's blog is informed both uh, by my work as a leadership coach now, but also by my time as a management consultant working with PA Consulting. And in my view, tomorrow's people are affected by three major things. You know, obviously, the first one is technology. And the way that this affects tomorrow's people is, if you like, the expectation that just as our personal lives are heavily enabled by techno technology, we kind of expect the same things in the workplace. And what I'm noticing or, you know, research suggests that actually the adoption of technology, particularly in small businesses, is not as great as it could be. So imagine having a workforce which expects that same level of enabling via technology uh, in the workplace and not getting it? How disgruntled, how engaged will they be as a result of it? Another major thing that affects tomorrow's people is if you like societal expectations. So um, one of the ways that I really see this is in the younger members of my own family who believe that uh, feedback is a continuous conversation and it includes the things they're doing well and not just the things they're doing less well. What we do know is that in schools, we've got more of a coaching approach, a performance uh, approach to their uh, success. And what we're not seeing yet is that same sort of approach in the workplace. So for us as leaders, we've potentially got people coming into our organization who expect, you know, that continuous feedback conversation. And that's not what they're going to receive. And what does that do to their engagement? And then lastly, we've got kind of the demographic changes. And this, if you like, speaks to diversity across all of its glorious forms, but also, uh, if you like, diversity that's not about protected characteristics. So, for example, introversion, not particularly a protected characteristic, but nonetheless a form of diversity in the workplace. Can you imagine, you know, for example, a 60 year old working alongside a 20 year old potentially in your workplace? Because as the retirement age kind of moves to the right, you know, more and more people are going to be working because either they need to or because they want to. So given all that, you know, complexity of landscape, given that changes that are hoving into view, if you like, uh, as a result of tomorrow's people, what can we as leaders do? Well, I guess there's three things. The first one, and I'm using this word a lot lately, is be intentional. Have a plan. How are you going to make sure that your organization is fit for tomorrow's people? 
What's the learning interventions that need to be introduced to make sure you and the rest of your leadership team are fit to lead tomorrow's people? Have a plan. Secondly, maybe do a quick check in with who you are. Do you know what your kind of default or your internal bias is, your view of the world, if you like? Do you know how that differs to people around you, to tomorrow's people? If you know your preferences and you know how they show up, do you know how they kind of differ to what tomorrow's people will expect? You know, do that kind of self-analysis, if you like. Encourage the people around you to do that self-analysis. And then thirdly, I guess it's kind of uh, an extension of that is understand those hidden biases. So when a member of staff says something or acts in a certain way, the minute you start to roll your eyes, pay attention to that because that's telling you something about your view of the world versus their view of the world. And all of this is important data for us as leaders to understand how we make sure that our organizations and indeed we are fit to look after tomorrow's people. Now, uh, without a bit, you know, without doom mongering, if we don't follow those steps, we could be sleepwalking into a potential leadership challenge. And what I'm observing at the moment is that small business owners are busy enough uh, without potentially having an even bigger leadership challenge on their hands to deal with. Tomorrow's people will soon be today's people. So the sooner you can get on board with figuring out what needs to change, both in you and your leadership team and the organization to be ready for tomorrow's people, the sooner you can then start to have that business success and that employee engagement and the productivity and the profitability. If any of this has caught your attention, I'd love to discuss it, discuss it further. The first hour is always on me. Do get in touch. In the meantime, have a lovely week and I'll speak to you next week. Bye.